What's up guys, my name is DJ Swivel and on this week's episode of Storytime, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys uh, basically my entire musical journey. But before we get started, make sure you like, subscribe, comment, do what you gotta do, and let's get it. What's up guys, I'm DJ Swivel, and like I mentioned in the intro, uh, this is a special episode of uh, Storytime. Uh, I'm a hard at work on my next plugin, which comes very soon, like days. Um, and I thought I would do a little bit of a different story time this week. Um, it's not an individual story, um, but it's actually about this piece of art, uh, which encompasses many stories. And um, so I thought I would sort of explain this and why it means so much to me uh, and especially why it means so much to my musical journey. Um, so this is a, a piece of art that I collaborated on with an incredible artist uh, out of Brazil named Wagner Kuroiwa. Um, he's an incredibly talented guy and I, I reached out to him and I said, I love your work. I'd like to collaborate on a painting. I have this idea and I was hoping that we could, we could do something together. So um, he obliged and, and I challenged him. I said, I want to share with you my entire musical journey, every detail that I can think of that um, has resonated. You know, if I can think of it uh, from as young as when I was, you know, five or six years old, obviously it meant something to me. Um, but I also challenge him. I want, I wanted him to include the things that represent his musical journey. And he's not a musician, but you know, we all love music, whether you're a fan or actually creating it. Uh, and so he included a ton of things that, um, represent music to him and, and he's an older gentleman. So obviously different, uh, uh, references, but so I thought I would walk you guys through this painting from, uh, as, as young as, you know, in this bottom corner, uh, me growing up in Toronto and, and, and sort of discovering my love for music. And then we're going to work our way around up until, uh, the present day. Uh, so let's start, uh, in this bottom corner. This is sort of all the stuff that represents my hometown of, of, uh, Toronto in Canada. Um, and the first thing that's worth mentioning is these two artists right here. Um, this is Tracy Chapman and, uh, Bob Seeger. And these were two of my mom's favorite artists. I remember her driving me to school every morning and she would have uh, the ca uh, cassette of Tracy Chapman and Bob Seeger. And I used to listen to Fast Car all the time. Um, and it's still to this day, one of my favorite songs of all time. Um, and so that's what that represents. Um, the violin and you know the, the couple violins and the bass guitar and the trumpet, these are all the instruments that I actually learned to play growing up. I think when I was in I want to say fourth grade, I learned violin. I wasn't great at it. Um, in sixth and seventh grade, I learned the trumpet. Uh, and then in eighth grade and throughout a bit of high school, I was playing the bass guitar. Uh, and actually this is the exact same. It was a Fender Precision bass uh, and it was that exact same color. It was red with the, uh, the white sort of fretboard. Um, and so, yeah, he really got all the detail. I sent him photos, I sent him everything and, and he really nailed it. Um, the other stuff that represents sort of me, my, my falling in love with music, aside from, you know, some of my, uh, mom's influences and, uh, the, the, uh, musical instruments that I learned, uh, the first album my mom ever bought me was Michael Jackson Dangerous in 1991. So I would have been six years old. Um, and then subsequently she got me Thriller and some of the other ones. Um, so there's a representation of Michael Jackson, a couple of them here. Um, and then as we move forward, uh, there's just general representations of Toronto. So the CN tower here, this is Castelloma, uh, a famous Toronto, uh, landmark. Um, so let's, let's move a little bit further over and right here, this is like the cover art of no doubts, tragic kingdom. And this was the first album I ever bought with my own money. Um, I saved up my money. It might've been, you know, $15 or $13 or something. And I remember it was Christmas time and I went and bought Tragic Kingdom and I love that album and it always stuck with me. Um, so moving a little further forward, we have, uh, you know, up here we have the uh, Blink-182 logo right here. Uh, and then right here we have the, the uh, Nirvana Nevermind cover and some of the uh, uh, Smashing Pumpkins Melancholy and Infinite Sadness cover here. And uh, in eighth grade, I joined a band 
and we did a talent show and the first two songs we ever learned was Blink-182, Damn It, and of course the, the, you know, the, the song that every band learns first, which was Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana. Uh, and I was always a huge fan of the Smashing Pumpkins. So, uh, so that sort of represents more of my musical journey. And then after that, I started to get more into like hip hop and R&B music. And so a lot of the things that you'll see across here are some of just my musical influences. So we have like the, a bit of the album cover from Fuji's The Score. I love that album. Um, I, Naughty by Nature, uh, Method Man had an album. Uh, I think, what was the first Method Man album I bought? It was, I think, To Cal 2000, Judgment Day. Um, and, uh, and so as we move forward, then we get into sort of my high school uh, era, and that's when I learned to DJ. And so the turntable here represents my uh, learning to DJ. Um, this is actually my, um, my high school where uh, I first learned to produce. Uh, it was uh, Saytech at W.A. Porter in, in Scarborough in Toronto. And um, yeah, they had a computers and music program and that was the first place I learned that you could make a whole song with just a keyboard. And so we had a little studio in there. It wasn't great, uh, but that's where I caught the, the itch to, to wanna make music. Um, just a little bit above that, during high school, I was DJing in nightclubs in Toronto and the first nightclub I ever played was it's now since closed a nightclub called the government and i remember it was a it's the it was actually at the time when it was open it was the biggest nightclub in north america it it could it had like seven rooms it could house thousands and thousands of people um and that was the first gig i ever played uh in front of about three thousand people and i was so nervous i i still remember it um, but it was it was an amazing uh moment and the way that i got that dj gig was um, because I love DJing so much, I always felt entrepreneurial. I was like, I want to go DJ. I said, let me go work for one of the promoters in, in the city and just hand out flyers for them and maybe they'll let me DJ one day. And so I was handing out flyers for 20 bucks a night. I would drive down town. Uh, I was probably about 16 years old, just got my license. Um, and I would drive downtown and hand out flyers in the freezing cold of Toronto in the winter for $20 a night. Um, and after doing that for a few months, I finally got a call from uh, my friend Neil, who owned uh, the company that uh, I was working with. And he said, hey, do you want a DJ? And um, we have a party coming up. Uh, you know, we'd love to have you play. I was one of, you know, seven DJs on the night. And, uh, and he's like, what do we put on the flyer? What's your DJ name? And so that's the moment I had to come up with DJ Swivel. Uh, so <laughs> it was really out of just a, a need to have something on a flyer. So, uh, so I have really fond memories of that. Um, then after I sort of was towards the end of high school, I ended up buying my own production equipment. And I remember Reason was the first software that I ever used. And so this is the Reason logo that represents that. Um, and, then, uh, and then I knew when I graduated high school, I wanted to pursue a career in music. And so... I applied to, there was a school near me, well, two hours outside of uh, Toronto uh, called Fanshawe. It was in London, Ontario. And so here's the logo for Fanshawe. They have one of the better music programs in Canada. Um, but actually I did not even get into the music program. They wouldn't let me in, my grades weren't good enough. <laughs> so um, it was a very small program. They only let a few students in, but I didn't get in. And it actually turned into the greatest blessing in disguise because uh, that forced me to rethink what I wanted to do for college. And I said, you know what? I still want to do music and I feel like I need to be in America. And so I went to Full Sail the next year. And so this sort of corner represents uh, my experience at Full Sail. Um, now, of course, I'm a Hall of Fame member. And so that's what this little trophy signifies. Um, I was inducted into their, their Hall of Fame a few years ago. Um, yeah, so, so that's like, a, you know, a lot of that. And then a lot of these artists that you see here are just my musical influences. You know, you have Jay-Z here, you have Eminem, Dr. Dre, you know, people I've worked with, Jay Sean, who's a very good friend of mine, Tupac, who I'm a massive, massive fan of. Um, so this sort of represents a lot of my, my musical influence um, at that time. So let's sort of move a little further over. And then after I graduated Full Sail, I moved uh, straight to New York City. And so this like little section of the painting here represents my time in New York City. And we'll start here. Um, you know, this is a small little little drawing of Duro, who is my mentor. 
Um, he is uh, the co-founder of Desert Storm Records right here. So he and DJ Clue started Desert Storm and he's an incredible mix engineer and producer and he gave me my first shot. He gave me my, my internship that I sort of credit uh, with everything else and I've talked about him a few times. Um, so I wanted to make sure he was represented here. Um, and then of course the first al the first major album that I worked on as a assistant or uh, yeah, just a general assistant with Duro was the Diddy press play album. And so here's the, the cover of the Diddy press play album. I got to meet Diddy. Um, I told a story a few weeks ago about uh, actually creating his MySpace forum and introducing him to social media. Um, and that was all during these sessions working on uh, press play. Um, so a little, moving a little more forward, um, here we have a bit of the cover of Fabulous's album, Loso's Way. Fabulous was my first real engineering client. The first person who was actually paying me money uh, to record his music. And obviously I met Fabulous through Duro, uh, but I, I had the privilege of, you know, getting cool with Fab and, and working on a few albums with him uh, from Nothing to Something first and then Loso's Way uh, where Duro actually gave me the, the opportunity to co-mix the album with him. So that was really special. Um, and then moving up here, you know, one of my favorite studios in New York, unfortunately it's not there anymore like most of them, was KMA Studios. And in, uh, I guess it would have been 2007, I met the owner, uh, Mike Kissel of, of KMA Studios, and he had just built this brand new studio in the Brill Building. You'll see it says Brill Building here. The Brill Building is a very famous, um, iconic uh, music landmark in New York City. Um, so many amazing songs, like, you know, Elvis's songwriters were working in there. And, and I mean, like the guy who wrote, I think, Jingle Bells or, or Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, one of those big Christmas songs, you know, he works out of the Brill Building. And, and um, th there's just a lot, a lot of history, uh, musical history in this building. And this here is actually the view from the main lounge. It's a view overlooking Times Square. And uh, so I have really fond memories of that. Um, and then moving forward, as I'm sort of uh, f not quite finishing my time in New York, but uh, f you know, a, a couple years or maybe a year after this Fabulous album, I connected with Beyonce. And so uh, this represents the cover of the album Four uh, that I recorded and, uh, and mixed some of. Uh, and of course, uh, that was the first Grammy I participated in at the 55th uh, Grammy Awards. Beyonce won for best. R&B vocal performance for Love on Top, which is a song that I recorded. So that's what all of this represents. Um, uh, here, you know, uh, one of my frequent collaborators right now uh, is the group, uh, the producers take a day trip. And so this is their logo. They have the, you know, their tag day trip took it to 10. Uh, so that's the, the 10 in uh, day trip took it to 10. So I wanted to include them because they're really good friends of mine. I've known them for, you know, 10 years now. And uh, yeah, I wanted to make sure that they were represented in here as well. Um, so moving forward, we'll go into the middle section and this is where, um, I mean, aside from all the little things, you know, you know, dispersed in between all, all of my musical moments, this is really, uh, what represents music to Wagner. And this is two different statues of, uh, Apollo, who is the God of music. And so you see, you know, harps and, and, you know, the wings and, um, more of these like, uh, you know, just, uh, Roman or, or, or Greek sort of God representation of music. So this sort of represents more of the classical era of music that I think resonated more with, um, with Wagner. Uh, okay. So moving forward, then we get, you know, towards the top here, which is when I moved to Los Angeles. Uh, so, you know, we start in Toronto, we go down to Florida for full sale. We make our way to New York city. And then I moved about six years ago to Los Angeles. And so, of course, we have the Hollywood sign and, and the Walk of Fame. And I had met the Chainsmokers towards the end of my time in New York, but they moved quickly to Los Angeles after I did. And uh, so this represents sort of the success that we had with Closer. Um, there's a diamond here because Closer is the first record I worked on that actually went diamond. Uh, I think it's now 11 times platinum, if I'm not mistaken, 10 or 11 times platinum. So. Um, that's my first diamond record and we won a Grammy for Don't Let Me Down at the 59th Grammy Awards and this photo of them I believe is from the uh, video of Don't Let Me Down, the music video. So um, wanted to make sure I included those guys because they're a huge part of, of my musical journey. 
Um, and then we get to sort of where I'm at now, like the, the, towards the, the end, not the end of my journey, but at least sort of the midway part, I would say. Um, and of course we have, uh, you know, Euphoria was this amazing record that um, opened up a lot of opportunity with uh, BTS. So we've got all the guys from BTS here uh, and we have Jungkook especially because Euphoria means so much uh, and Candice who co-wrote the song with me is there. Um, and then in between that, there's all these like little little things like, you know, a soundboard which represents obviously my, my journey as a producer and an engineer and you know, what I love about this, this painting is every single time that I look at it, I discover something new. Um, there's so much like nuance and detail and, and you know, there's like um, songbirds down here, you know, so this represents music for, for Wagner and, uh, you know, you have like hands that are, that have these like guitar strings that are wrapped around them and, and so, you know, obviously that, that represents music and, um, over here we have sort of, uh, I guess, a hand that's writing. Uh, and so, you know, I guess that represents songwriting. And, and um, yeah, there's just all these amazing things. And one of the, the coolest things that um, I did with this is I wanted to make sure that every artist who I worked with, uh, who really uh, empowered me to sort of uh, grow in this industry, uh, I wanted to make sure they all got a copy of this. So when I finished it, um, I created, uh, I believe, 10 prints, uh, or, or might have been 12 prints. And uh, I sent them to all of the artists who were sort of instrumental in my career. So, you know, of course, my mom got one, got to do that. Uh, but, you know, Duro got one, and Fabulous, and Beyonce, and and uh, the Chainsmokers each got one, and, and, and Day Trip got one, and uh, Candace got one. And so I wanted to make sure everybody had a, had a piece of that. It was more just a thank you to them, uh, for being a part of my journey. And, uh, yeah, so I'm really proud of this and, uh, I hope to do another one down the line. Like this sort of represents, you know, up until, uh, you know, last year, let's say when this was done. Uh, and then, you know, maybe I'll do another one for the next, uh, 15 or 20 years of my career and, and, and see what that one looks like. So, um, anyways, I wanted to share that with you. This sort of is my entire musical journey. And um, yeah, every time I look at this, it, it reminds me why I make music and, and, uh, and why it's so important to me. So anyways, thank you guys for joining me this week. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, uh, you know, leave a comment, whatever you got to do. And uh, I'll see you in two weeks for another story time. Peace. Peace.